Alrighty, so welcome, welcome everybody. To start immediately, I want everybody to close their eyes, if you would, and allow yourself to drop into your heart space. Take a nice, big, deep breath and lean back into your higher self. Lean back into your spirit. Just allowing yourself to relax into this aspect of self. And I want you to notice what it feels like when you move out of your mind and take your attention into your chest and just focus on what is actually real. In this spaciousness, in this place, is your true essence. And in this true essence, there's no fear, nothing's wrong, everything is in loving acceptance. I also want you to notice that this is the frequency of abundance, because there is no lack. Everything is taken care of. Everything is all good. Just breathing into that deeply. And I want you to just ask yourself, what does it feel like to live from this space more? I was literally operating from this space. What would be unfolding in my life and world? And just noticing if your mind starts to think as opposed to just leaning back still. Moving out of the mind, into the heart space, being in the energy. So folks, you're welcome to open your eyes and come back to the here and now. And again, depending on your ability to be able to drop in, that's going to give you just a little taste of what we're endeavoring to offer you through the Wealthy Spirit Luxury Retreat. Like what does it truly take to live from spirit and move beyond the realm of the mind? So we're going to talk more about this, but let's get started. Hey, everybody. Welcome, welcome. Where are you all tuning in from today? I know, Elspeth, you're in LA. Cherie's in the North Island. Jerry, are you at home at the moment? Or are you around... Let us know where you're tuning in from, how you feeling, what did you notice by tuning in? Was it easy? Did you find a place of spaciousness inside of yourself? Was it easy to tune into the frequency of everything is available to me? Northern California, nice and sunny over there at the moment, I hope. I've just turned the fire off because it makes a little bit of noise in the background, but I'm leaning against it because <laughs> it is so cold here. I've got my Ugg boots on. I'm not sure how you're finding it, Cherie, but I'm like, oh, yeah, this is good. It's like having a hottie in your bottom. Right? What did you notice from tuning in? I, and again, the reason I wanted to start with that is because often what happens, folks, is we're living from our mind so constantly. Are we living from the mind making decisions? We're living from the rational 3D reality. My money mind kicked in, yes, and I'm still in a heat wave. Awesome. Okay, cool, right? Yes, 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 yes. And we're going to unpack this a little bit today because this is the secret. So, okay, let's jump in and get started. Who am I? I'm Rebecca Davison. I'm an intuition coach, spiritual mentor, energetic alignment guide, founder of the Intuitive Life Academy. 
what do I do? I really help people to know their true nature, to understand that you're not your mind, right? That you're not even your body, that you are something way more powerful than all of that. To start learning what it is to live from spirit. Yes, it felt very calm and soft. Feels very peaceful, easy, not noisy. Yes, this is your true nature, folks. And of course, we have our mind that we need to contend with. So that's really what I help people to do is to let go often of the grip that the mind has on your reality and lean back into this energy and presence that is way more powerful than your mind and learn what it takes to live from that place. Does that sound preferable, folks? If you were living from spirit more, can you anticipate what might be unfolding in your life? More peace, which is literally why I talked about uh, this webinar in particular about creating more peace in your life and world. Now, also too, because I know that you're all very aware, what do you think that does in terms of your vibration that everybody talks about when it comes to manifestation? If you're living in peace, what does that do for you? Yes, it just naturally goes up. And isn't this a, just a lovely natural way of being the energy? You know, oftentimes there's a lot of focus on shifting distortion, but we don't need to let our mind look for it. <laughs> because our intuition is just going to show us. Right, our emotions are going to show us. The universe has got you. It's always going to show you. So I help people to really live more from spirit rather than from their mind and then receive all the benefits that come from that. So what I know about you is that you desire more. Would you say that's true? I think human beings are innately wired with the desire to live to their potential. Right, to be the person who knows what it is to crack your own code, to be the person who's living in more awareness and peace. What would you be doing, folks, if you were trusting your intuition more? Hi, Anita. We've just tuned in, lovely, to the stillness in our heart space. And we're doing that because we're asking ourselves, what does it feel like to live more from spirit, from your higher self, than it does from your mind? What happens? What's your biggest handbrake, folks, when it comes to receiving intuitive awareness? Often it's your mind, right? Because the mind's telling stories. It's got a narrative. We'll talk more about the ego. But to really live in this space where you're trusting your true nature, your spirit, you're letting go of any attachment you have to the body, any attachment that you have to the mind, it can be quite a, a, a head trip, right? Because the mind mind's going to have all sorts of stories about it. The ego is going to kick in. But this is the work when we live from intuition and there's relaxation and peace. When you're living in peace, how easy do you think it is to get an intuitive download? Because there's no resistance in the way, right? It just, boom, it drops in. Has anybody ever been frustrated with their intuition? Right? Were you like, oh, why is the information not coming? Why am I not getting the awareness? Probably because there's some form of resistance in the way. I know that you want to live for more freedom, pleasure, and abundance. Everybody wants that. Everybody wants that. Everybody wants to know what it's like to live from that space. And you know that you're prepared to do what it takes to create it or else you wouldn't be here, right? You're showing up for it. So if you've ever had a frustrating relationship with your own intuition, I'm the first person to tell you all about that and understanding that, again, that's about your emotional guidance system, your emotions and how they're actually showing you whether you're in alignment with the truth and how the universe sees you or not, right? Your emotions are always correct. There's nothing wrong with them. They're a guidance system, right? But they're showing you if you are seeing yourself the same way that the universe does or not. Does that make sense, folks? Like when you feel good, you're in alignment with the way that the universe sees you. When you don't feel so good, you've probably gone into a thought process or a story that is not the same as the universe, right? Because, you know, when we start judging somebody and it feels bad, 
because that's the universe saying that's incorrect, right? That's an incorrect perspective because there's nobody wrong. And I know this can be a big thing for the ego to go, actually, I'm innocent. What does that mean? I haven't done anything wrong. What does that mean? I'm free of guilt. Do you think that you are able to see yourself that way, right? And this is where the ego pops up and goes, oh, but of course you've done something wrong. <laughs> right? It's going to tell you all the stories about all the ways you've done something wrong. I want you just to let that land for a second. What would it feel like in your body if you knew yourself as completely innocent? What does that feel like in the cells of your body? What do we see as innocent? Often children. Guess what? We're all children of the universe. So what would it feel like in your body to know yourself as innocent? Does that mean that you would go out and be a terrible person? Of course not. You know what it is to be loving and kind. Often too, the ego will say you need me. You need me to be in control of yourself. right? Or you need me to identify with. No, you do not. Is this landing? Is this making sense? Right? How does your body feel knowing that being innocent is an option? A whole new way of being. Because we live in duality, right? There's light, there's dark. And the ego loves that because it reinforces separation. I'm good, they're bad. I'm right, they're wrong. I've passed, I've failed, right? I'm good, I'm bad, right? Like, again, we do this to ourselves all the time. What we want to do is start living in oneness. And in oneness, there is no right or wrong. There is just acceptance, what does that feel like in the body? Does that feel more harmonious? Does it feel more peaceful? Oftentimes too, the ego will go, oh, but I'll miss the drama. <laughs> right? What am I going to do for excitement if I'm just peaceful all the time? You're going to go out and create what it is that you want. Do you identify with this? Do you see yourself in what I've written? Do you want to know what it's like to crack your own code and live from a place of peacefulness and spaciousness, creating what you want? To just be the frequency of abundance, to not even have to think about it. Oof, could talk about that all day. How many times do you go out into the world and somebody's telling you, this is how you create abundance, this is how you manifest, this is what you need to do? Would you not just prefer to be it? to be the frequency of abundance, which is your true nature. So, oh, I can get very excited about that. So how do I help people? I literally help people to make more money, but I do it through energetic alignment, which is this peace, this spaciousness, this abundance. Yes, we're focusing the mind, but really the process is actually one of letting go. Letting go of anywhere you feel like you need to control things, and letting go of any way you think that the mind is really in charge of it all, letting go of how it needs to look in order for you to be happy, and just to be happy no matter what, which is one of the most amazing secrets about creation, to be the person who's like, my money stuff is taken care of, so I get to live to my divine purpose, to my mission. Because right? one thing I identified for people, people have a lot of fear when it comes to money. For those of you who don't know, I worked in banking for 13 years, so I have got that 3D practical, rational world aspect of it. But then helping people create money and realizing that there's so much fear around it and it becomes all-consuming. You've got better things to do with your time, right, than focus just on money. You're, if you're all here, you've got a divine mission and a divine purpose, which is way more important than money. Because on a soul level, you're already taken care of. How do you know you're still here? Are you liking what you are creating financially? Notice where your attention goes with that question. More often than not, it will go into the mind. 
How does spirit see what you are creating financially? Can you notice the difference between what the mind thinks and how spirit sees it? Because spirits like infinite abundance is available to you. You can't go to the universe either, folks, and say, universe, help me, I'm broke. The universe will be, I don't understand what you're saying, because the universe is abundance. Right? It doesn't hold the frequency of lack. So what's that showing us? That we need to step into a space of, of course, it's available to me. I'm this limitless being having this human experience. Of course, I'm going to take my seat at the table. I'm going to be the person who says, yes, of course, this is available to me because this is my true nature. And the work is really allowing anything that's in the way of that to be released. Do you know how powerful you are? Notice what happens in your body with that question. Because your true self is like, absolutely. Your mind might be doing gymnastics right now. Right? As opposed to the part of you that just knows that you can create. The part of you that is in alignment with everything that you want. The mind, right? Anyway, let's talk some more about um, one of my greatest passions, apart from my work. I love my work. People often say to me, you know, like, I just consumed with it. I've started, I've been coaching for 10 years. I have been always interested in personal development. I was reading books like The Road Less Traveled when I was like 15. I have always been a huge consumer and learner of information. But one of the things too that I've always identified is there's so much noise out there too, folks. Whereas it's like, when you work with spirit, it actually gets to be really simple. I'm just going to do a short segue here in regards to the ego and why it's so important that you know what it is. Because really, once you've transcended your ego, you can you don't need to worry about doing your 369 or whatever somebody's telling you on TikTok, right? Say this prayer or cast this spell because you will just literally be it. Right? The ego is kind of like a software program and we're all running it whether we're aware of it or not. Once you start becoming aware of it, you will start noticing how your ego is always the part of you that is always labeling things. This is right. This is wrong. It separates. Right? So the ego really is your non-God self. And most people live from this place their whole life. Rather than understanding that we need to really, to live in peace, we need to dismantle the ego. When you have dismantled the ego, you literally get to live in those bliss frequencies. You're not undermining yourself. You're not second guessing yourself. And if you do get triggered, you know what to do because spirit's going to help you move through the trigger, which will be fear-based, rather than allowing you to continue to suffer. So if you feel frustrated in terms of the outcomes that you're creating, you can be guaranteed that your ego will be there. Right? Your ego will be sitting on the sidelines saying, well, that's not good enough, is it? Oh, look at you. You're not achieving what you set out to do. Oh, what does that mean about you? Right? The ego will kick off, folks. If you don't know what it is to transcend it, and again, I'm not talking about learning to manage it and deal with it. I'm talking about learning to dismantle it for good. For good. Very few people on the planet, folks, are knowing and aware of how to do this. Would you like to be one of those people? Right to go, I'm not choosing to operate from this anymore because I know it's not even my true self. Yes, right? This is your greatest freedom and your greatest salvation. Is it easy? Not necessarily because the ego doesn't like it when you decide to let go of it. Right? The ego is really like a reflex. You know when you go to the doctor and he used to hit your knee with a little hammer to check your reflexes? The ego does does that all the time and it does it so quickly what happens when you judge somebody that's your ego 
right? Because you're creating separation. You're saying there's something wrong with them, which is really self-judgment when you understand the law of one, when you're judging somebody else, you're actually hurting yourself because you're saying that's wrong or that's bad. And that person's still an extension of you in spirit. So the invitation from spirit, and again, this is really where the ego kicks up because the ego will ask questions like, well, what about war? Or why doesn't God love us enough? And why do we have war? The universe gave you free will. And the universe is also the truest part of yourself. So the universe is giving us the divine assignment. How do we change the world? Can you imagine what would happen if everybody transcended their ego immediately? What would happen on the planet? We'd all be living in love, right? We'd all be living in bliss. We would never think to pick up a gun and hurt somebody. Every war that has been created, folks, has been created from the ego has been created from fear which says you're different from me so I'm going to hurt you I need to protect myself against you right so understanding this super passionate because again I would see all the information and again helping people to learn how to manifest I would be like whoa you know again I, you want to as a coach too and in a, as an innovator you always want to be distilling it, right? You always want to be distilling it, burning it down, burning it down, concentrating, concentrating it. And this is it. Transcending your ego is one of the most powerful and important things that you can do in terms of creating the outcomes that you want to permanently live in bliss. If you, when was the last time you got triggered about something? Maybe it was last week. All right. I tell you what the difference is for me now when I get triggered. I can see my ego mind separately from my true self. Right. Like my true self is just watching my ego kick off. Right. As opposed to thinking it's all me. You feel the difference? Like it's like my true self is just observing my ego child self, non-God self, having a patty. <laughs> Guess what happens? There's just loving acceptance of it. So even if you're in the trigger, you can still experience peace. Does that make sense? Because it's super important. Would you like to be able to offer that again today, right? <laughs> well done, Elspeth, for being... And again, like even yesterday, I was going, whoa, this last week especially, I don't know what's happening with the planets, but I was like, wow, intense. Does this make sense? Can you see why I'm so passionate about this, folks? Can you see why this is, and especially if you've had lots of circumstances in your life that are challenging and are all pointing to separation, Right. This could look like for people, it could look like going bankrupt. It could look like divorce. It could look like losing money. It could look like not feeling successful in your business. It could look like a numerous things. Anywhere where life gets contracted or feels like it's going negative to understand that the ego is going to be all over that. Because the ego is literally the part of you that's driving the separation and it's fed by guilt and fear. Apart from being massively passionate about that, I'm also passionate, folks, about traveling. Day one. Oh, hello. Who's that? <laughs> I'm just going to put you on mute, Alex. So, traveling. Who else loves to travel? Yeah, right. I, I'm, oof, my goodness gracious. I love traveling. All right, these are, this place here is actually the retreat destination. So this is in Crete, in a place called Panormus. Uh, I believe that was in Milan. Oh, that's right. This is apparently the face of God. That's why I included it. I was like, oh, it's good to know what the face of God looks like. Somebody's interpretation. Cathedral in Milan. Again, another shot from being in Crete. This is me in Florence. Uh, Grand Canyon. Another shot from Greece. I love to travel, folks. One of the things that I love about traveling is that you have to trust the universe. Right? You have to trust the universe. You are literally kind of putting your life in the universe's hands. I, I talked last time about when I went traveling and I came back and there was actually quite bad turbulence. 
I've often spoken to a lot of angels and guides when I'm experiencing turbulence. You are literally doing that dance of intimacy with the universe, trusting life, trusting God and other people. That's what you're doing. You're trusting that life has got you, that you will get to your destination, that it will support you. So if you are a traveler as well, if you love traveling, again, we will have that in common in terms of a value proposition. I love it because you get to see the universe in other people. You get to go out and experience life. Now that's the difference too, folks. Are you willing to see spirit in other people as opposed to just their body? It takes on a whole different dimension, right? When you see other people as a spirit. Can you see my spirit, my higher self talking to you right now? Can you feel that? Can you feel it? Does it feel different when you're willing to see somebody, not just their body and their appearance, but the energy behind them, their spirit? Can you feel my spirit acknowledging your spirit? This is one of the most beautiful things that happens when we go traveling. Okay, let's talk about quantum leaping. Who wants to quantum leap your reality? Don't we all? Right? Don't we all? Do you think it's going to be easier with or without your ego? <laughs> your ego is kind of like all the sandbags, right? That are holding you down. It's always going to undermine you. It's always going to bring in the fear. It's always going to say there's something wrong. Right? And again, depending on how much focus you give it or how much attention you give it, it is literally going to play out in your reality and that is going to play out in your vibration. And that is going to be a situation where you're not loving it, right? Because you're going to be sitting there going, why am I not feeling the way that I want to feel? Why am I not creating what it is that I want to create? And again, people um, often don't understand what their ego is, folks. Your ego is the belief in separation. Let that land for a second because your brain might be a little bit like, what? It's the belief in separation. It's the belief that you are separate from other people. Where in truth, we're all connected in spirit. You have your own soul, but that soul is connected to everybody else's spirit. And this again can be a little bit like, whoa, for the mind. But when you start grasping this, you are going to open yourself up to so much peace and to so much happiness because heaven looks a lot like oneness. Would you agree? In heaven, there is just total acceptance of everyone and everything. Can you feel that in your body? Does that feel safe? Because what the ego will do again is tell you that you're not safe. There are so many benefits, folks, to doing the work of transcending the ego. When you understand what it is that is the belief in separation, when you come back to the truth that I'm not separate from anything, especially what I desire, there is no gap. I'm the one who's either creating the gap or closing the gap by my perspective. So how am I choosing to see this? You know, and, and again, this is why as humans, we have to, in spiritual fundamentals, is forgiveness. What does forgiveness do? Forgiveness helps close the gap. Forgiveness helps you to see the other person as you, as an extension of you. It helps you to close anywhere you're making them separate in your reality and bringing it all back to love. When you're in those beautiful love frequencies, it's really easy to create what you want. You don't even have to worry about it. Think about it that much. You just have to be in the energy of what do I desire how do I wish to feel next? What would I be choosing to do to create more of that feeling? This is very much the intuitive led pathway. So let's have a look at the scale of consciousness. Can you see how, if you're actually looking at this from a different perspective, and if you haven't seen this before, folks, this was worked out by David R. Hawkins, who discovered that all emotions have a different energetic frequency. So you can see 
shame and guilt they like to hang out together at the most contracted and again look at them grief apathy fear desire anger pride desire is an interesting one because of course we all have wants right but this is the desire of feeling like i i have to have it right as opposed to being detached so in these energies here folks guess what's in here ego 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 the ego going oh my goodness i'm so angry that i don't have what it is that i want what does it do to your vibration <clears throat> right i'm fearful three main emotions folks sadness anger or fear the other one being gladness or happiness they're all hanging out down here. Anger, fear, guilt, shame. This is the domain of the ego. You want a quantum leap? Imagine what happens when you let go of the ego. It's like a cork at the bottom of a bucket of water. You let it go, it's naturally going to rise. Look how high peace is on that scale. Right? And a lot of times we are taught, yeah, shift the distortion. Yes. But your intuition will show you when the distortion is present through your emotions and your ability to be able to respond to yourself really determines how quickly you can shift back into pace. But if you were living in pace constantly, ask yourself, to what level do you feel like you've lived in pace in the last week? And again, notice what you're asking. You're probably going to ask your body, not your mind, because your mind is going to have an opinion about that. It's going to have a story about that. It's going to be having something to say about that, as opposed to the part of you that knows the truth, your body. The body doesn't have an agenda, folks. That's why it's always really good to ask your body what the tr truth is. Because your body, right, your spirit, you're living in, your body's living in your spirit. The body doesn't have an opinion, an agenda, a narrative like the mind does. <laughs> yeah, seven to eight. Awesome, right? But that's because you've worked on yourself, right, Elspa? If you let the mind run amok, Right? It's going to take you out. And if you can't identify your own ego, it's going to take you out of pace. Okay, six, yeah. What does it feel like if it's a 10 out of 10? It's a big one for people, folks, is letting go of control. Ego loves control. I'm doing this, right? Actually, you are being lived. I know, right? Woo! Do you trust the universe? If you're living in pace, your level of trust in the universe is going to be extremely high. The universe has got me. I am safe. It doesn't matter what my external circumstances look like. I know the universe has got me. And the ego will trick you up on this all the time. It doesn't look how it needs to look. Right? This happens to entrepreneurs all the time. I haven't got the numbers I want in my program. I'm not making the money I want, right? That is the domain for the ego. For a spirit, if you just took a couple of minutes to lean back and get some guidance from spirit, you can shift everything. Never noticed that neutrality is a lower vibe. I always thought that it was a good place to be with a difficult person situation. It is, Jerry. Of course it is. With a difficult person and situation, if there's fear or anger there, then neutrality is a good choice. And also too lovely, if you look at it, when you bring it across, it's so much more expanded. It's really the gateway, right? Your willingness to forgive somebody, that's a good place to be. You have to be neutral really to get to that place too to be able to choose it, right? Because if you're in too much anger or shame or guilt, etc., then it's going to be more difficult. And again, don't let the mind look at this in a linear way because you can bounce up and down the scale all day long, right? But I'm talking about living from a state of being. Yeah, got it, taking a deep <laughs> Yes.
<laughs> right? And just noticing how the mind loves to grasp hold of an idea and then give it energy, make it real. If you've noticed that, folks, like your mind is so good at telling stories, isn't it? Like really, really, when in truth, there is nothing wrong. That is the true reality. Alrighty, so let's talk about the retreat. The retreat is going to be held in Panormus and Crete. Now, a lot of people have said to me, why are you hosting this retreat in Crete? And I was like, because I was guided to. I, I love the way that this is, has come together from my own intuition. I, um, there's a really cool story about how I went to Crete a couple of years ago now, and I was wandering around and it was, you know, like I was looking for a retreat space and I walked past this property. I was actually taking photos and I walked past and the car drove out of the front gate and I was actually taking photos and there was a guy standing on the front doorstep and he said, uh, uh, would you like to have a look? <laughs> he was like, I was like, oh, you're the owner. And he was like, yes. And he showed me in. Now, I was leaving Panormus in probably about oh, an hour, two hours, maybe. Like, I didn't have that much time left. It was one of the last places that I went to. And it was just amazing, like, the, the synchronicity that he was there, that he showed me around, that he invited me in, that I got to have a feel for the retreat space. But again, why did I choose Crete or Greece in the first place? Because my intuition guided me to go there. Right. I follow my intuition. I followed my intuition all over the world, in fact. And again, are you willing to do the same? This was what it often means to live courageously, right? To let go of the fear-based ego mind and live from spirit means that you will do things that don't make sense to other people. A lot of people are like, oh, New Zealand's beautiful. Why don't you have it here? It's like, because that's what my intuition said. Uh, and my intuition had it all under control. That very last day where I connected with the owner, his name is Manolis. He's a lovely guy. Showed me around. I was like, this place is perfect. You know why it's perfect? Because every single bedroom has its own ensuite. Is that not perfect for a retreat space? Again, I thought it was going to be next year. I started looking at the booking and before I knew it, I had booked it for this year. And I was like, that's literally spirit taking over and making the decisions. I, I have hardly really advertised this. I've talked about it, but I haven't really advertised it. The retreat is half full already. So again, when you're willing to work with spirit, amazing things can happen. But trusting life and your higher self. What level do you feel like you trust your higher self at the moment? To what level is your higher self truly leading? A right, really great question to ask yourself. Is there a desire there to allow your higher self to lead more? Cool. So these numbers are pretty high. Awesome. What does it feel like to be led by your higher self? Do you do things that are outside of your comfort zone? This is the thing about spirit, folks. Spirit knows no limits. As a human being, we automatically have a limit because we have a body. But that's not the truth of who we are. Yes, calm and empowering, right? And spirit's always going to guide you to more expansion. Always. Because there is no lack in spirit. It's always going to guide you to an, uh, another thing that your human self might go, whoa, whoa. But Spirit's like, yeah, we got this. Right? Like one time I drove across America. I didn't fly. I was instructed to drive. I, I got a message to actually drive to a place called Halls Bowl, which is about a half an hour from where I live, 20 minutes maybe. Got in my car, drove, got there, got out. And my guidance was like, I was like, well, what am I here for? And my guidance was just literally like, we just wanted to see that you do it. I was like, what? <laughs> But that became apparent later 
when I did get the download to drive across Texas, basically, to go and meet a woman that I'd met for half an hour in Sedona. She very kindly invited me into her home right, with her family. And again, that I was willing to do it. And again, that that was significant because it wasn't fly, it was drive for some particular reason. It was an amazing trip anyway. But again, the courage that it takes to do that. I drove by myself for three days across the country. And a different in, in New Zealand, we drive on the other side of the road. So again, right, are you willing to follow your guidance, even if it doesn't make sense to other people? Are you willing to be that committed to your higher self because you know it's going to have an amazing outcome? What did that lovely lady do? Amber really helped me to open up my third eye because I was following my intuition and my intuition said, do it, so I did it. Not like, and you know what happens with most people? Oh, that's, oh, wow, yeah, that's a nice download and then they go back to doing something else, right? Well, <laughs> they're not making it a priority and then they're wondering why they're not feeling like they're living to their full potential. But not for you, right? Because you're going to be the person who's choosing to expend yourself beyond your comfort zone. And again, Crete for me, I don't know, it makes the world a much smaller place when you're organizing an event in a completely different country. Those of you who don't know, we're in New Zealand here, which is pretty much the last stop before Antarctica, right? Yeah. <laughs> And it definitely feels like it at the moment. So the Wealthy Spirit Luxury Retreat, folks, do you like luxury? What is luxury for you? You know, I'm very fortunate. I grew up in very privileged circumstances. I know what it is to have a high level of luxury. My mom is an amazing gardener. She was always incredible at creating beautiful spaces. She still does. I know what it is to live in luxury. Lux actually means light. So when we're experiencing luxury, it's about experiencing more light. Lightness of being, light in your bodies. And wealthy spirit, why did I call it wealthy spirit? Because I want it to be a situation where you understand that if you want to create more abundance in your life and world, which is a natural desire, you want to go to spirit first. Because the mind can make it incredibly difficult and it doesn't need to be. You know, and sometimes what happens, of course, when we start aligning with spirit, we get exponential results. Like I had a client who gave me a beautiful testimony the other day. She's done one of my programs, Elegant Wealth, three times. The first time she manifested a 30,000 pay increase, which seems phenomenal, right? $30,000 pay increase. The next time she did Elegant Wealth, she got a $35,000 pay increase. Mind blowing. But the third time she did it, she had different experience. She actually had a solution to a health issue that she said she would have paid thousands of dollars for. And she said she jokingly said that she manifested world peace because she stopped fighting herself. Now, out of all those things, I love helping people make more money. It's so much fun. It's a natural byproduct of alignment. But I tell you what, helping somebody to create inner peace, that touches me way more deeply than any cash figure. But often too, these numbers seem um, almost fantastical if you're not aligning with spirit, because your brain's going to go, I've done this before, who's done this before, looked at somebody else's manifestation results and gone, how on earth are they doing that? How are they creating that? What is going on for them that that is even possible? Right, This is what the mind does, and that's totally fine to question it, but often can you see how it will take it into fear or go, you know, she must be making that up. How the fear creeps in and goes, what is even going on here? I don't get it. Yeah, her post was so fabulous, wasn't it, right? Because it was just like, it touched me so deeply because I know that that peace frequency is worth all the money and more. 
living in peace guarantees those kind of outcomes guarantees it and she's already created a lot of wealth and now she gets to live in peace and create whatever she desires from that space would you have rather have the money or the peace right granted we want both but I tell you what if you have the peace the money will come it's inevitable. In fact, it is literally universal law-wise impossible. So again, at the Wealthy Spirit Luxury Retreat, what are we going to go into? Yes, we're going to go into your relationship with money, but we're also going to go into your relationship with spirit because that is what brings the ultimate peace. The deep dive into your true nature, the part of you that knows the truth. So what's included? As from the 2nd to the 7th of October, so it's luxurious accommodation for six days and five nights. And both properties, there's two properties back to back. They're both the same. Well, similar, very similar layouts, very same finishes, et cetera, same amenities. They both have their own swimming pool. It looks out over the ocean. <laughs> we'll be going out for lunch. I've got a beautiful friend of mine, Rebecca. She's already been planning the menu, but we are having a private chef, a local gentleman who's going to come in and cook a dinner service for us. We're going to do shopping trips to for jewellery to rent the mo, which is about 20 minutes away. Greece is a wonderful place to buy jewellery. Why do we want to do this? Because we want a memento of the experience, but also to demonstrate to yourself that when you choose yourself, you can create infinite abundance. Right? It's really for you to acknowledge your own spirit has really got you. And of course, we will be doing the work morning and in the afternoon to shift your reality. To be in that space of I get to live from peace. No matter what my ego says that living in drama or chaos is better, that your spirit knows that living in peace. This is where you experience vitality, folks. Like living in peace is good for your body, it's good for your health, it's good for your vitality, it's good for your energy levels, that is good for your sleep. Right? Living in peace frequencies is the ultimate. And to learn how to do this in a beautiful, luxurious environment. How does that sound? And the thing is as well, folks, like when you come together, I mean, this is just a, an outlay of what's actually included, but when you know what is magical is connecting with like-minded people. The retreat is for women, right? It's for women to come together in connection and unity to be in that space of like, yes, I am choosing to recognize myself as spirit and choosing to practice that in this environment, and I tell you what, it's going to blow open your crown chakra. You're going to see reality in a different way. And you're going to know that you're safe. Because one thing that often happens for the body is the body to accept and receive massive abundance. It needs to feel safe. Right? And the ego can be very good at kicking off and going more money is not safe. But once you've dissolved that and you know you're in spirit, infinite supply is safe. It's a huge thing. This is the actual event space. So you can literally see here's the swimming pool and here's the ocean. Does that feel luxurious? To be able to swim and see the ocean at the same time, right? Beautiful finishes in these properties, heaps of space for us to come together share good food, good vibes, good vibrations, spiritual development, to transcend ego, to be that person, right, who's going to go, I'm going to do this, I'm going to offer myself this gift of living from spirit, and also too, folks, this is where the world's going, right, we're having a shift in consciousness, it's been taking a while, but that's okay, we're here for it in this lifetime, and if you haven't realized already, it is you who are the leaders. Have you accepted that identity? I am a light leader. I'm going to embody the frequency of living in peace and transcending my ego. Why? Because then you go out into the world and everybody you interact with feels your frequency, wants to know what it is that you are doing to live in such a beautiful frequency. 
And then you can help them to learn to live and love from spirit to see everything is connected. This is how we change the world. By you being a leader for the light. You can call yourself a lux leader, a light leader, right? The person who's going to go out into the world and change the world by who you are being. So good, folks, right? So good. Can you feel the peace and the harmony that is embedded within this? Right? It's so good to be excited about life. But peace is not just an emotion, folks. It's a way of being. It's a state of being. Your higher self is always peaceful. Because in spirit, there is never anything wrong. So what will we be doing? We're going to shift your reality in a week. <laughs> Putting it out there. Like, this is what we're going to do, right? We're going to shift your reality in a week. You will leave the event from it with a different perspective of reality. Right? I'm going to literally break down what your ego is, how it plays out in your reality, how it feeds off fear and guilt. I'm going to help you to dismantle it. Right, so you can be the wealthy spirit that you came here to be. You can know yourself as abundance. You don't have to do the things. You can just be it because you've become that frequency and show you how to keep yourself in that space, right, in the God zone. Because in that zone, you're in a loving acceptance of everything. You're not making anything wrong, including yourself or money. Or the limitless supply of money that is available to you. Right. And again, are you choosing that for yourself? Are you choosing to be the person who's like, yes, of course I'm choosing this for myself. Of course I'm choosing to be the person who knows that limitlessness is my true nature. I think sometimes too, what will happen is the ego will be like, it will bring up stuff, right? It will go, oh, is that really possible for you? It'll be like, um, oh, you know, are you going to end up feeling disappointed again? You need to know what your emotions are to be able to navigate them. Your emotions are a guidance system. And again, if you don't know how to navigate your guidance system, it's going to make it really difficult. But once you have the answers in regards to how to navigate your guidance system, you can orientate yourself so it becomes like a map of consciousness. Nothing worse, right, than being in the territory and not knowing where to go. Knowing where to go is clarity. Right? Not knowing where to go just feels confusing. Would you agree? Like once you have clarity, so much opens up for you. And again, you will know what it is to keep yourself in the energetic frequency of pace. And folks, this is where we want the world to go. Agreed. We want to live in peace. We want it for ourselves. We want it for our brothers and sisters. We want it for humanity. You're going to be the person who's actually embodying it and being the leader for it. Can you feel how much love that the universe has for you and how much it's easier to receive that love when you are living in peace? So many times I have seen it where people are desiring to feel more God in their body. This is it. This is how we create it. This is how we become it by being that person. I get to choose to live from peace. All right, what else have we got here? This is just an example of how our days will unfold. Obviously, rise and shine. Um, and again, we've been doing specific things, folks, like figuring out what time the sun comes up in Crete, <laughs> what time the sun goes down, so we can arrange, you know, a very special experience. Uh, have a delicious, healthy breakfast. Obviously, we're going to do the workshops, which is where the, the power play is really in terms of shifting your reality to create a magical relationship with money, to know yourself as abundance, 
we're going to take a lunch break, we'll have heaps of time. The hottest part of the day, obviously, is the middle part of the day. So after lunch, there will be time to relax, to explore, to go for a walk, to go for a swim in the pool or in the ocean, whatever you prefer. Gather again in the afternoon for another workshop. And then we'll have a meal together and then we'll just, we'll share, right? We'll do the embodiment practice. Yes, yeah, I believe so. I mean, again, trusting you as adults, you can go for a swim whenever you want, but preferably that, you know, somebody else is there with you. If you're going for a swim in the middle of the night, sure, you can do that. You're a, you're a human who can get to make choices, whatever you want. <laughs> again, and again, you have free range of the property, right? Um, yeah, and they are beautiful, right? Because one of the first things, of course, that we're going to do is access the properties and make sure that they're blessed, that they're in a beautiful vibration so that when people come in, that they're feeling those energies of peace already. But yeah, of course, do what you want. So what do you want next, folks? Let's create it together. I love, love, love people seeing how much spirit has them, right? So this is the links. So you can actually, actually, what are you doing here? I will put it in the chat box. Um, oopsie, where's it gone? Is that my last screen share? There we go. I'll put it in the chat box. What questions do you have, folks? Are you in the energy of understanding how important this is, even for the future of humanity? Going on here is the chat box. All right. And who do you want to be in relationship to it? Who do you want to be in relationship to it? Do you see yourself as a leader? Do you see yourself as somebody who's doing the work of embodying pace? Do you know how your ego is playing out in your reality right now? And again, sometimes it can be like, because the ego does funny things, folks, right? It does things like it will, um, it will use your spiritual awareness against you. <laughs> the ego is tricky because the ego will do things like, oh, uh, you know, you're feeling angry right now and there must be something wrong with you. You're obviously not very enlightened. Classic ego using your awareness against you. And if you don't, can't identify how your ego is playing out, it is going to create resistance, right? It's going to create a problem. So do you have the ability and skill set at the moment to navigate that and to orientate yourself back to great levels of pace. Because one thing that I see for people all the time, especially having worked with a lot of entrepreneurs, is they do this really interesting thing where they um, they can stop themselves. I'm not feeling it today, so I won't show up. Right? Anybody even notice that? Right, like, um, or they slow themselves down because they think that they need to feel a certain way in order to create outcomes. Like, this is ego hell, basically. I was talking about it with a friend the other day. We were talking about the ego bloodbath, like how you turn around and you get a paper cut, and then you turn around and then you get another one, and then before you know it, somebody's pouring salt on you, and then there's lemon juice, and you're just like, oh, right? Because this is what the ego does. It ties you up in knots and guess what folks that just slows you down from your divine mission your divine mission is not ego-based your divine mission doesn't even recognize the ego because it's not of god it's not of the universe it is your non-god self because the universe everything is the mind of the universe the mind of god and if we're allowing the ego to lead, which most people do most of their lives because they don't even realize that they have an ego or what the ego is doing or how it's playing out. And then they're kind of going, ah, oh, wow, this is why I'm not feeling the way that I want to feel. This is why I'm not getting the results that I want to get. This is why I'm not. I'm watching other people make 30 grand and then another 35 grand and living in pace. And I'm still sitting here going, what the hell? 
right? Don't you love it how when the ego toe picks up on somebody else's manifestation, it's just like, oh my goodness, right? Like, is that even true? Oh my goodness, this person's made a whole bunch of money. Is that true? Are they lying? The ego loves to rationalize things. And we need to learn what it is to live on the other side of that. Have you ever experienced jealousy, folks? We're all human, right? We've all experienced some form of jealousy. Guess what that is? It's the ego. Right? It is the ego getting in there and saying, well, that person's doing better than you. But the beautiful thing about jealousy, right? If you look at it from spirit, it's like almost like, it's an invitation. It's an invitation from spirit to say, of course, that's available for you, but what's your version of that? Let's release the fear and the guilt and that you get to step into your own version of that. But recognizing that feeling and that contraction, that is ego. And that's what the ego feasts off. It feasts off separation. It feasts off making you wrong. It feasts off making you guilty. If you're looking at your ideal self and your ideal reality so you clicked your fingers and you're living your ideal reality right now is there any guilt there is there any shame <laughs> no of course not so fundamentally the most important thing the most biggest gift you can give yourself is to be the person who's going to offer themselves this level of freedom which means really living from your higher self, which means letting go of any attachment that you have on your mind or even on your body. So again, folks, if you click the link, it will take you through to my calendar. Um, there's 15 spots for the retreat. There's eight spots available remaining. So this is the opportunity to get me on your calendar, to have a conversation. There is a Google document that you need to complete. I'll send that to you when you book the appointment. Uh, in regards to the investment, etc., I have payment plans which are very generous in terms of making it accessible for people. So again, I'd encourage you to have a conversation with me about what it looks like to live from your higher self, the part of you that is fearless, the part of you that's in the energy of like, of course I can create this. What is it that you want to create next? Do you know? Because guess what? Your ego can block you from seeing that as well. Guess what the ego loves? Chaos, confusion, doubt. Keeps you small, right? Keeps you small. When you have clarity, yeah, abundance, yeah, freedom and safety and knowing myself in abundance, absolutely. Do you know what that specifically looks like? 50 grand a month, what does it look like? Clarity. And this is again, can you see, as soon as I set a number, right, the ego can be like, because it can be like, we haven't created that. Or what would it take to create that? Or who do you need to be to create that? Like the mind can get involved and start telling stories. And your higher self is often leaning back, watching you. Right? <laughs> watching you in the fear. Watching you in the story. Watching you in the narrative. Waiting for you to lean back and to ask for some help to be able to actually go and create that. Have you ever noticed that, folks? One of the last places that you often look for, for help is spirit. Who knows what's best for your life? Spirit. Nobody else. Nobody else, really. Like, there are a lot of people who like to think that they know. Right? But really, at the end of the day, your intuition, your higher self knows what what's best for you because they know everything about you everything even when you think that they're not looking right they're still looking they can still see you they know everything about you they love you they want you to be happy so really allowing yourself to gift this to yourself so does anybody have any questions
see if everybody have any awareness did you have a light bulb moment today did you have a like oh yeah are you leaning into what it feels like to be on the other side What are you choosing for yourself next? Yes, powerful to hear the reminder about being in innocence. Yes, and the ego will stop you from seeing that. Because a lot of times, too, like I've said that before, and people are like, what are you talking about? Isn't that crazy that people are so disconnected from even the idea of innocence, which actually shows you how insane our thought processes actually are and how much they can keep us away from the mind of God. And the universe is like, of course I want you to be abundant. Of course I want you to experience your heart's desires. But you are going to need, the universe never lowers itself to meet you, right? It's showing you through your fear and through your emotions, hey, you're out of alignment. So it's always giving you information, but it's never going to reduce it itself to kind of sit with you and your victim energy, right? It's always going to say, hey, baby, you're going to bump up. Right? You're going to bump up. You're going to bump up. <laughs> it's not going to be any other way. Yeah, seeing it as something not just for my expansion, but for the world. Yes, can you see the knock-on effect? If you're living in peace, what it does for other people. Is that not the greatest gift that you can give everybody? Yourself, your family, your kids, right? That legacy of you're good, I'm safe, I'm taken care of. I'm not depending on anyone outside of me because I can depend on spirit. I love leaning into my infinite self and spirit. Yes, everything you could ever desire, folks, is there. The biggest hurdle is the ego, but we're going to dismantle it at this retreat. We're going to be like, no, -uh -uh, we're not doing that anymore. Right? We're not running that software program. We're going to live from spirit. How easy is it to get intuitive awareness for your life, for your world, for your business, for what the impact that you're wanting to create when you're living from spirit? Easy, right? It just drops into your lap. And you guys are all amazing light workers in your own right. But asking yourself, do I feel like I have transcended my ego? For good as in permanently even if I'm triggered can I still stay in peace because I'm just observing what's happening rather than identifying with it and thinking it's me whole different ball game and a lot of people are still doing the I'm going to write it down three times I'm going to write it down six times I'm going to write it down nine times I mean that's right as superfluous I mean those things are fun to do but this is fundamental this is the thing that's going to shift your reality dramatically and why are we doing this because we're shifting out of a 3d reality which is actually third density into fourth density which is going from will into the heart space and that's what's happening with humanity at the moment as we shift into the age of Aquarius. Everybody's becoming more conscious, thank goodness, and more loving, which we desperately need because we can still see things in the world that are not necessarily loving. But we get to be the change. You know, like when Gandhi said, be the change that you wish to see. This is what we're talking about. You're going to be it by choosing to see oneness. You're going to embody heaven on earth. People, when they connect with you, will feel that frequency of heaven on earth within you. You are the change. A lot of people go, I'm not doing anything in terms of war or sex trafficking or whatever it is. This is it. This is it. Right? This is how we change the world. If you're not running ego, 
then the people around you are going to see what's happening for you. You're going to feel the expansion. They're going to be like, oh my goodness, that's amazing. Then you get to go out and show them what it is to live beyond ego as well. If everybody did this, immediately imagine the frequency of a planet. That's your mission, should you choose to accept it. And if you would like to come and do that with us in sunny Crete, that's what we're going to be creating. Thank you so much for being here, folks. To those who are watching the replay, I will send out the um, link for my calendar underneath it. Let's have a conversation about what's possible when you live from spirit, which is really living from love, being in loving acceptance, being an unconditional acceptance of everything, being the person who is practicing forgiveness, because that is the way, one of the ways that we dissolve the ego the fastest and the quickest. And in the meantime, let's if anybody got any questions, I'm sending you so much love. Thank you for being here. I'll look forward to connecting with you in Crete. <laughs> Lots of love, everybody. Bye. Bye.